All right. We're gonna open up the. Uh, you all set? Yeah. All right. We're gonna open up the Water and Sewer Commission's meeting. It is at uh, seven twenty-five. I'm going with uh, approving the minutes of uh, October and November. Um, so we've got a. So just to make sure that we covered it, I want to make a motion to um, approve the amendments to the October 1st, 2019 meeting. Uh, what were the two men? So we had to change the spelling of Colin's name. Oh yeah, and, and we uh, had to add uh, the phrase um, engineering, engineering about the um, the way the grants work. Had to be fully funded in order to get to be able to. Yes, the project has to be fully funded at the town meeting. <coughs> well, we're including engineering fees, right? Right. I wrote engineering. Yeah, I, had, I had engineering yet too, but it is. I wrote the same thing you wrote yeah. engineering to be fully funded. Yeah. But the discussion, I guess the discussion prior to that was right. that the project had to be fully funded. In order to get yeah. that much. I was going to say, after it. It, she mixed two different there is, yeah. things together. But I know, I, I understand. Engineering doesn't qualify for the grants. Right. But the project has to be, be fully, fully funded, funded through the town meeting. Even if if it's a $2 million project and we're going to get 50%, right. the town has to fund the $2 million and then we can get right. reimbursed right. up to 50% or something like that. Mm -hmm. But so this, it's missing the section, but this part is correct. The engineering can be fully funded for the town. Yes. But there's a section that's not leading up to that point. But. <clears throat> so, uh, second as amended. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 So then I make a motion. Of the meeting? Yeah, so I make a motion that we accept oh. the meeting minutes from. November 19th, 2019, and December 3rd, 2019. Any discussion? Any changes? Oh, you want to do December too? Yeah, we'll just run oh, okay. one of those two together. She had just to oh, uh, yeah. okay. October and November. Yeah, we had to approve the amendments. Right. Okay. I don't know if there's any reason why she wanted that to, to include this. Uh, I don't think we had amendments to November. Okay. All right, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I wasn't at the January 7th, 2020 meeting. I don't know if you guys want to handle that one. Uh, yeah, I think we're, let's, let's just hold table lows till next meeting. So I want to, this, I want to make sure there's some wording on that. That's. Okay. Because it was a it was a whole thing. We didn't have a quorum, so I wanted to make sure that that's worded properly. Okay. There was discussion, but nothing. There was no. The board would have still got to take action. Yeah, there was no action taken. Right. I don't think Steve was at that meeting, was it? Uh, oh, that one. He was only at one. Yeah, yeah he was at you the. You were here at the one that he was here. He was at the December meeting. All right. So, so that needs to be amended. Well, this needs to be amended. Yeah. And I'll, I'm going to go through that. We'll just table that for okay. the next meeting. And what do you want to table? Just the, the Approving January. Approving the January Approving, meeting. Yeah. January. Yeah. Manager, water and sewer report. <coughs> <coughs> Start with the 
sewer report. The January rainfall was 1.98 inches. The Cinegro hauled off 95,700. Flow was 6,458,304 gallons for an average of 208,333 gallons per day. Wasted 141,050 gallons for an average of 4,550 gallons per day. Used 780 gallons of alum. The sodium hydroxide tank is still being cleaned out and flushed. So we didn't use any sodium hydroxide. Electricity was 393 kilowatt hours for the month. And the river average was 158.991 cubic feet per second. We completed and passed the first quarter toxicity sampling. Uh, we had the annual analysis for the waste sludge to Cinegro, and propane was delivered. So also, we need to add to this that um, we did have that site tour with EPA, DEP, and the third party consultants there. All right, there you go. Uh, went well. <coughs> um, they said that they're going to do a case study on it. We'll get a copy of that. And that they were uh, looking to do kind of a mentoring thing because our plant runs well. So they're trying to go around to other plants that don't run so well and try to look at what we're doing to run correctly and see mm -hmm. what they're doing wrong to see if they can take some of what we're doing to apply it to other other systems. I don't know how I feel about mentoring other systems, but yeah, <laughs> I know. You don't know. It's yeah. all different. Got, a, got enough work to do, but well, it's a compliment for Peter. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Right. So to do that, it's good that we're so everything seemed to go well. We'll see what we uh, come up with when they generate the report that they're going to come up with. So I'll keep you updated on that. January water report. So the flows were for the month of December, as we discussed previously. Uh, total water pumped was 6,135,000 gallons for an average of 197,900 per day. Uh, total KOH used was 473,000, <laughs> 473 gallons. The chlorine was 396 gallons of batched solution. Sampling for the month all came back good. System repairs, he curved off and covered the hydrant that was hit by a tractor trailer truck up at the common. Um, primary pump B is not making the normal volume at high pressures. So when the tank's getting fuller, the, the volume's dropping off a little bit. So we need to rebuild that pump. Uh, and he fixed two broken pipes on pump A, the vacuum primer system. So the monthly maintenance, he greased the turbine pumps at Glen Ann Turbine. He purged the flow meter ports and cleaned the clay valve strainer screens at Glen. He replaced two meters, did three final reads. We had two new connections and meter installations. The work performed. He corrected deficiencies noted in the DEP sanitary survey, including the color coding and labeling chemical lines for identification. Uh, he changed the pH probes at Glen and Turbine, scaled the transmitters in mission for increased accuracy, put new pump hour meters at Glen, and the square root to linear signal conversion he added component to try to get that to work better at the pump one flow meter at Glen. We had three customer complaints that he followed up on and uh, he reinstalled the mixer down here at the treatment plant. Any complaints about uh, chlorine? Yeah, I think you have complaints about that too. Yeah, I've gotten a couple of public complaints I was called out on and Got a random text message one night. What's with the water? So, any chance that you could just explain that to us again? So we're putting in right around 
at the pump stations. Um, the requirements per the regulations are we reach point two at the furthest points in the system, and we don't come anywhere near that. One of the complaints was uh, up at the end of Pond Street, which is which is probably one of the further se sections of the areas in the system. And he went up there, he tested the water there, it was 0 .09, so not even half of what we should be there for a minimum. Um, so we do keep it low. We don't, we're not really chlorinating for the purposes that most systems go to chlorination, but if we don't and we get another bacteria hit, then they'll force it on us. Mm -hmm. And if they force it on us, then the levels will be much higher than we keep them. Um, I mean, you can probably go online and Google the other towns, look at their uh, the annual report that we do, the CCR, and it'll give you the levels that you see in other towns. Um, I just quickly jumped on, and Oxford is one point something, so you know they're like 1.08, 1.09. 1 um, so that's you know over three times what we put in. So. I can smell it on my Yeah, but we haven't <laughs> had the corner. Why is the problem all of a sudden? Because up until we had the, the bacteria hit up at the tank that time, we never chlorinated. So you go from no chlorination at all to all of a sudden chlorinating. And then we did do a full flushing this time. So with flushing everything out of the lines, you know, there's nothing to chew up that chlorine as much. So you're going to get it a little bit further, further into the system than you did before. And any, um, is there any explanation to, so the, the three, four complaints that I got um, all seem to be closer to the tank on Franklin Street. So any, so I get, I get the end of the line would be less. Right. So in theory, would that mean closer, closer to, to the, the tank, tank would be higher. Would be higher. Yeah. Yeah. And we're the any highest points will be between the pump station and the tank when we're pumping. Mm -hmm. But then when it gets into the tank, it's all blended and it, you know, it off-gasses some in the tank. So it'll be a little less when it's coming back out of the tank. So mm -hmm. you'll get some fluctuations whether or not you're pulling water when the tank, the pumps are on or off, and depending on where you are in the system. Yep. Um, but overall, we keep it far below what we, yep. we I mean, Some days it's pretty strong at my house, but not too often, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, everybody's just a no chlorine. Right. So when you get and trust me, if it was up to me, we'd have no chlorine. No, no Can we go back to none at some point, or is it is it once you start, you have if, to? If they said we had to keep it on, I could fight it and try to take it off. But then, like I said, they'll hammer us if we get any any type of hit, even if it's an error. They're just going to use that as an excuse. They need the chlorine. Yeah. I mean, so in other words, if we get a bad sample even from one area, they're going to make us. They'll come in and make you go through the whole thing. And to be honest, the way we did it, because we weren't under an order to do it, if they put us under an order, they would have had had us. They want they would have wanted a permit done to put in the chlorine, and everything to be engineered. And it probably would have cost you a little over 150 grand to put it in. So where we did it on our own and kind of did it a little at a time, it would probably cost us around 20. So, <laughs> by kind of mm. proactively doing it as opposed to being forced to do it, you know, and to be honest with you, since I started here, they kept pushing that they want us on, on chlorine. And it's not all the time. No, and you're going to get variations just based on when you're whether it's been what? sitting there. Um, you know, if you get some air pockets or something in the line, it's going to give it the ability to off-gas, so you might catch that air pocket coming through and you're going to get it. It's already vaporized. It's, a, it's out of solution. So, uh, But if you run it for a minute or two, I can't imagine you're going to have that much. <coughs> All right. Well, thanks for that explanation. Okay. Any more phone calls? I'm just going to direct them to this meeting. <laughs> Go watch it online. Going to the quarter of the discussion, or um, well, I think 
maybe when we have the information, I think it's still so I don't know if you want kind of to have too much of a discussion yeah. on this right now as opposed to wait. you guys have all the information now. Let's go um, through it. So you can go through it. I still think there needs to be some discussion with, with uh, yeah. the Is that the department. information on it, Keith? Um, well, I also yeah, brought up the... Today. I had the, uh, I didn't see any. The guy that does yeah, the rig studies back today. Oh, okay. That, that so I brought it up to him, and he, it is a he says he strongly no. advises against it, <laughs> yeah, unless you enough. put radios in. So he said what he would recommend is buying all the radios, putting them in, and then doing like a, a two-year quarterly billing, and you add a $25 fee to, to each bill oh, that's for a two-year period. And then that fee goes away after that, but that would cover the cost of all the radios. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's the way I would go. And he said, if anything, he would look at, if you were going to try to do quarterly billing, he, he strongly recommends against doing a estimated. estimated. He said, if you, if you insist on going to quarterly billing without putting radios so you can do actual reads and do it correctly, he would recommend putting all your fees, like your, your basic fee and anything else that you have, but I think that's the only fee that we have now is the basic. Yeah. Um, put that on one quarter and then the, the bills per usage the next quarter. <clears throat> so he, he was recommending to alternate that way if you were going to do anything like that. But I think that would probably be a nightmare in the billing system. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, we just have to see. I mean, I mean, almost every other town I looked at, all those quarterly. Oh, quarterly now. Some do monthly. Monthly? But they have, they have a... Yeah, radio. The only yeah. way you're going to do it is a fixed base if yeah. you do monthly. Cause yeah, they you, can, you can hit a button and download all the reads that yeah. day. Yeah. We can we can never get away with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, we saw what the cost was when they came in and gave us yeah. that proposal. Mm -hmm. and that's just absurd. So. Yeah. Well, at least we can... But, yeah, I would look through, look through what she gave you. I don't know if Doug's going to put anything in his report while he's doing the um, great study or not. Yeah. Well, I could just talk to talk to Gene about it as well and see what you know how that affects them up there as well. I'm yeah. on that. And if it was going to be implemented, how that would work. But, um, I think at some point we're going to be we really should do it. I mean, we should stay. I know. It's, I mean, he said Doug says he doesn't suggest it until then, but I think. Let's we should you work towards that together. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, it's we estimate those, it's, okay. it's pretty close. Yeah, I, think I the don't system. think we've got a lot of discrepancy. We don't. You don't have a lot of huge season, seasonal swings and stuff yeah. here. I mean, yeah. everything's pretty stable. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, could do that. Oh, we'll see what's going. Do a little more research on it and just want to get the ball rolling. And just put the thought on that. Because, like I said, there's a lot of people that. Yeah, I've been getting cab lines too. That's the place they bought it. It, might, it would help out their financial situation. Well, we can do the uh, payment plans. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's another thing to consider. Mm -hmm. True enough. I just think that most of the people that are that don't pay their bills on time, whether you do biannually or, yeah, they or quarterly, yeah, still they're payment. still going to miss it. Still, and then it increases your demand to, to four times a year instead of two times a year. Mm -hmm. you know, if you just take your two times a year and split it up in a payment plan, you only get that fee one time yeah. instead of you know two times during that cycle. I mean, yeah, it would be more revenue for us, but. No, you don't want not, to do that either. Not the way I want to try to collect revenue. So. Right. <clears throat> all right. All right. So you guys can all you have copies of it if you guys want to go through it. And, yeah. You know, I don't know if you want to leave that on as a agenda yeah. item. Yeah, just to keep it on as keep an agenda item and we'll keep moving trying to see if we can bring discussions up with it. But it looks like Lee put a bunch Lee did a nice job and put a lot of stuff together for that. Mm. So I think she had a full, like laid out a full calendar year mm -hmm. yeah. as to what would be involved with that. Good. And a cost 
kind of cost analysis at the end. But that's just for supplies. That doesn't include labor or mm -hmm. anything else involved in that. I would venture to guess the, the technical support with Munis might go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We go to four times a year instead of twice. Did we ever have a cost on the, the radio reef to set, a, set the whole town up on radio reef? Did um, we look at that a while ago? They're about roughly 150 bucks a piece. Um, $187,000. I would say probably $150,000 because we have some. To buy all the equipment? No, just the radios. It's it, radio. it's a cost per unit. So at this point, the only cost we have, other than labor putting them in, which isn't terribly hard because all it does is Melt bolts on over the old the reader that we use now. Um. So you just go up two screws. But the part that takes a little bit of time is you got to program each one. So once you mount it, then you sit there with the gun and you know download, and it tells you all right, this radio is with this meter. Mm -hmm. And then you you know you, you program it so it has everything in there. Yeah, it's pretty time consuming. Yeah, not terribly. It's no. it's less than installing a meter. You got a system yeah. set up. Right, you don't have to try to get in people's houses. It's just a matter of you know going on the outside, screwing yeah. it on, yeah. and once you get going, it'll be quick. You know, the first few might be a little yeah, work the bugs out. difficult until you get used to you know what the flow is. Uh, <coughs> we're almost going to have to do that if we're going to go quarter. Yeah, yeah, I would say we can't do one without the other. Right. Yeah. And one of the um, one of the vendors was here at one of the meetings, and he talked about having, you know, you have people come in to install them. Yeah. The only problem with that is, is you're paying prevailing wage, yeah. and meter installer is like eighty seven bucks an hour. Oh, they won't do it. We got to pay to have that done. No, if we, that's what a lot of them do. Well, I was, because then they would just come in, sweep the town. They, and they bring in like 15 people and yeah. we'll have it done in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, you mean hire somebody to come yeah. and do it? Oh. Yeah. yeah, I have to look at the cost of it. I mean, yeah. just weigh it up and see. Yeah. Weigh it all in. everything all the way down to electricity, right? Well, I think we should talk about uh, a couple of mm. wages. That's a good one, so that's... Yeah, the wages, yeah. I don't want to go down too far. Yeah, the wages there are based on full staff, as full we discussed staff. at the at the last one. Uh, and you went up a little bit on the overtime? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think in sewer last year we were like dollars, not thousands, yeah. away from, from going over, and that was with only one operator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, the electricians 
Or electricity is going to stay pretty much even. Yeah, it seems like we've been fairly well with that. Is there any more discussion on salaries or anything? Uh, no, the only thing I would do is just, I know we had, we had funded it uh, in our current year, but I wasn't, what, just I'm not sure what the positions were, what, what funded, so I'm just trying to, so trying to. what that consists of is basically the staff we have now, yeah. plus one more water, one more sewer, and then yeah. the split labor. Okay. <coughs> That's everything? Yeah. Okay. I know, I know we're still, we're still missing one, but okay, you clarify that. I was thinking it was just two, and I'm like, well, it's not going to get us to where we need to be. Right. Okay. So I wouldn't wouldn't get too excited if you look at the totals because I don't have those like the town hall numbers in there yet. Yeah. So like where it looks like it's thirty nine thousand less than last year, it's not really. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> So the middle column is stuff that needs to be done, but it's kind of outside the normal budget. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of these are also things that, when I look at them, um, some of it you probably need to start budgeting a certain amount every year. And the treatment plant's getting older, so a lot of the stuff is going to start you know, there's going to be a lot more repairs and maintenance, replacing parts and pieces here and there. Um, so, you know, you're 15 years old now with the plant, so. Oh, I can't believe that. Uh, yeah, I can't so either. I said, Seems like just yesterday we put it in. I was waiting for Josie to say, what do you mean we got to increase? Did we just build this plant? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's hard to believe, huh? Oh, you yeah, put in for doing the uh, painting on and the uh, siding on this building? Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> it really needs it. Spill turbine. So the... Uh, we have... We have what was expended in... Uh, F1 19. The way we're tracking. Yeah, that's on the sheet. That's here. Yeah, that's that, that was data. Oh, okay. It's double sided. So have you have you cross referenced these, Bob, and gone through and seen what you're what you're proposing and what we what was actually spent and see if there's a, any savings that we could reduce on some or, or add if needed? Um, I did some, uh, but it's it's hard to tell right now. Yeah, and there's things in here that we know bills are coming in that yeah. aren't included in here, so it's a little tough. About on the, for FY19 to give you a full. Yeah, I'll spot. have to go back and get that. And then just see where you are. FY19, what was total spent? <laughs> FY20, where you are to date, and then. I usually have that in here. Yeah. FY19, and then, you know. Where we are. We include this sheet, but yeah. usually, I, we printed this one. I usually go through and I figure out when we print this as to what percentage of the year we're at. And I usually have it on mine just so I can. To a reference and say, all right, we're 52 percent of the year, fiscal year. So if you go down anything over 52 percent, you know we're tracking behind, and anything under 52, yeah. we're tracking decent. But I don't want to. I guess we don't. I don't want to over overestimate or underestimate on that. Right. So we want to make sure to get as accurate as possible. So I'm give a real good handle on where we are. But 
expenses. I just had a question. So on um, the report um, that comes out of, I guess this comes out of Munisa from Gene. Um, this report that? Yeah, from Gene. No, this is our... Ours? Yeah. This okay. is a spreadsheet that I made. Okay. And Lee, this is the one that before Lee got here, or after Debbie left, yeah. Debbie used to all do do it all in pencil. Yeah. In the accounting book. Yeah. Well, I said, yeah, I'm not doing that because she was off by a penny and it took me two yeah. weeks in full time just looking for the penny. Yeah. <laughs> so I created a spreadsheet and put the percentages in there and and this is all tied to every every warrant that she writes out, the ones that you guys sign, mm -hmm. we have a separate tab for each one of those. And then she puts that in there, and it's all linked back to this sheet, so she doesn't have to sit there and do all the math. Okay. So every time she puts something in, it automatically updates this sheet. Okay. So my question is, <coughs> is on um, repairs and maintenance contract, account number fifty-two four hundred. So on this sheet, it it shows fifty thousand is what we budgeted. We're already at fifty-five. And on this this sheet over here. That same category says ninety thousand. Because at Fall Town meeting we went and transferred more money. So we just didn't update this sheet. Okay. So that that's where that Right. So that's ninety. Right. So that trans sheet. that that appropriation went into that a portion of it went into that and then okay. it went to a couple other spots as well. Okay. But I wouldn't expect on the sewer side another big thing like that. That was a screw up right from when the plant was built. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that was the twenty six thousand. Yeah. 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 And when we finally uncovered it down there, which was in concrete, which was in a concrete structure, and then inside that. So when we finally busted it all up and got down to it, they used the dresser coupling, but they only put like two bolts in it. So they didn't even put all the bolts in, which is why it failed. Yeah. So it wasn't put in correctly from the installation, which is part of the problem when the engineers weren't overseeing the project the way they should have when it was built. And the contractors all belly up and it was you know, a combination of terrible contract to begin with and yeah, I mean, you know, a lack of oversight from the engineering that you guys I'm sure pay for. Yeah. Daily. Mm -hmm. And um the next one down the professional and technical consultant, the account um fifty three thousand. Yeah. Um so hundred and fifty thousand. So what's the collection well, system? Which one I got fifteen thousand. Yeah, so we appropriated fifteen, but for next year we're saying oh. one hundred fifty thousand. Well, no, it's twenty thousand for next year in the normal budget, but that center column yeah. that's additional needed. So if you go to that last sheet. Yeah. So okay. So that's what I was going to ask. So what's collection system evaluation and report? That's basically an I and I study. Okay. Um, it's something that's been due, and we've been. Uh, putting in for extensions and stuff. And it's well, you've been doing some of it yourself, right? Yeah, but there's a lot that we can't do. Right, yeah. We just don't have the equipment to get it done. So that's the increase on that is to have somebody come in. Yeah. So that would be... How often does that have to get done? It should just be once. Oh, okay. Um, once and then, you know, we'll... What I would recommend is that we do what we can with the equipment that we have mm -hmm. and just go out periodically mm -hmm. and just with the new GIS stuff that we have it all on the computer, we can link in the GIS to sections that we inspect and that way it'll keep track of it and we can keep a spreadsheet and it just shows so that you can kind of say, all right, this one hasn't been inspected in a few years, let's go out and do these sections. Okay. Uh, so that should be... Should I guess what I wanted, I think we talked about, touched on last meeting was I wanted to try to go through, and you did pull it out, so but some of the items I think that I wanted you to uh, go through again, and we'll, we'll, which one prioritize, which ones, because I don't think we were able to do all of it in, in one year, but I think we should prioritize which mm -hmm. is the ones that have, absolutely have to get done, and then plan for 
what we need to do for the next fiscal year. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot. I yeah. just don't know how much we could actually blow off. <laughs> yeah, I know it. It's a lot. So, to take fortunately, off. a lot of these are things that came up. But, the collection system we were trying to save as much as we could by doing as much as we could ahead of time. But mm -hmm. It's just with without experienced people and I can only do so much in a day mm -hmm. trying to get it done. Um, we just don't have the time or enough people that are experienced in doing that. collection system stuff. Um, which is technically a whole separate item from your treatment plan. Yeah. So a wastewater plan is Usually have wastewater operators, but they're kind of a dis different classification for a collection system operator. <coughs> um, so anyway, All right, so you just want to go through each of these. I'll kind of explain them. Yeah, I'm just looking to see because they're up over the, over the total uh, a lot, about 316. Sewer 360. And then water 302. Yeah, so I mean $600,000. $618,500. Yeah, well, try, to, try to do it one year. I don't think it's uh, <coughs> that's going to be the case. I'm really going to put our nose to the, to the numbers. And again, these are some of these are ballpark numbers. Yeah. Until I get a proposal. I mean I think they're they're probably fairly close. But all right, so if we just go right from the top, um, I put in three actuators, three manholes. So the manholes, um, those you could blow off. The actuators, I would say no, just because we've already had some fail. We had backups, um, but we've gone through those and can't get the ones that we have anymore, and they're not rebuilding the ones that we have anymore, so we have to upgrade to a new style, which we've done one. Um, we took parts from that one and fixed one of the other ones, but we have about 12 in the system. Uh, and if they go down, it kind of takes down the whole system. Mm -hmm. So I think we know of two that pretty much need to be fixed. We, we put them together with parts from other ones. Uh, but I would say that you're you know, going on kind of borrowed time there. Okay. So that's going to be done. Manholes we can... Manholes can wait. Uh, collection system repair. <coughs> There's at least one, maybe two, that I would say we, we should definitely get to the one up on Pond Street. Um, it's, it's a fair amount of infiltration. And by not doing it, all we're doing is spending more money treating mm -hmm. groundwater down here. So you got one real bad leak up. Yeah, one sure. that has a pretty good flow coming in. <clears throat> so it's going to cost 20 grand to fix it? I'm, I'm ballparking numbers here because well, I guess. And that's, I'm it, figuring it's more than one. Um, there's a couple things that we have to do inside one of the pump station uh, wet wells. So between a weekend. <coughs> <coughs> Fence repairs can hold off for now. Uh, the Gilboa Street pump, that has to be done. We have one that's down right now. So we're working on one. Uh, so we got to pull that one. Good ball pump rebuild. That's going to be done, right? Yeah. That's down now. Yeah. But that's one of the things that I was saying. I know I put it in here for now, but it's one that should probably go in a regular budget. Because we essentially should be, at this point, going through and probably one a year. You know, we'll do Gilboa, one of the ones at Gilboa this year. 
one of the ones at Colonial next year, one at Davis the year after, one that comes down here the year after, and then it's just kind of a, by the time you get through them all, it'll probably be back and starting over, so that should probably be something something that's in well, the should be budget. So then you should put that under on the, on the maintenance. Right. Maintenance contract. Yes. <coughs> uh, Repairing the maintenance agreement. Uh, well. Yeah, I was gonna say it, I don't, she adds items every year. So I gotta figure out what she yeah, wants it broken down Jean's more. Little bucket. What's she gonna make yeah. sure it goes in the right bucket? <laughs> but the problem, and that's some of this. When you go through these, you'll see like. I put it under capital on on sewer, but then I put it under replacement equipment or additional equipment on water. <laughs> but it's up in the air on what Gene classifies as. Oh well, that's capital. That's not this or because like meters. I mean meters. The town's all metered, but we're replacing meters, and she considers that capital. Well, that's not really. Well, capital. Have, well, it has a has a lifespan on so It does, like but yeah. But that's the same with pumps. I mean, yeah. the pump's going to have a lifespan. You're going to have to replace it or rebuild it. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's just a matter of, I mean, these are kind of the numbers. I just, I did ask her for the spreadsheet on each account number and what actually goes in those mm -hmm. so that I can get my interpretation. But I haven't gone through it yet because it's a, it's a full list of everything and there's there's like 10 times more accounts than we use and I'm sure she'll get to that at some point by adding a few each year mm -hmm. but for now I've got to go through that and try to compare what DOR classifies that account that line item as opposed to what we're putting it in and then there's times that you know we assume we're putting it into this and then she changes it up there and then we gotta go and change it around in all our books. So but overall the numbers are here. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of I gotta get in the right buckets. But well, that one has to be honest, DOR only looks at salaries and expenses and yeah. they don't care about all these line items. So, so have you any of these in here um, has a DEP? Made reference to any of these that need to get done? Because that, so, that would obviously be a priority. Right. And that's where, understand. so this vulnerability study yeah. is a new requirement, and that is being required by, uh, let's see, I think it's 2021, sometime like the end of 2021. Sure, if that's the end. So, uh, but that's going to take some time. So, what is that? Um, well, it's new, so I got to read through their whole requirement. But it's it's really looking at we have to do an evaluation to determine all our vulnerabilities. So, you know, it's it's some of the climate change stuff where you're vulnerable to climate change, but they're also looking for this to be complete, not just the stuff that we're in with the vulnerability, the municipal vulnerability program that we're in that's separate from this. This is, they want to look at complete vulnerability from cyber attacks to terrorist attacks to... You, you, know, you can stop. It's <laughs> you know, unfunded mandate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> $75,000 out the window. That's all mandated. Huh? That's all mandated. <clears throat> So does that, that have to be done by end of in FY20? I have to double check. Um, it's it's by sometime in the year 2021. Yeah. I'm just not sure as to whether or not it could go to December of 2021. But then you're looking at trying to do it all in a six month period instead of you know the whole thing. Who does that? Gonna be an engineering firm, I'm sure. I'll shop around. I think that, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about when we're going through some of these. Is you know, I like stand tech and all, but some of these things, like a vulnerability study, I think we should probably look at a, a smaller engineering company 
Yeah. 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 Something that we can get some of these small things a little more reasonable. I mean, to do the, the tank rehab that we got to do still up at Church Street. You know, I went and got prices for all that originally, <clears throat> but then it falls under the dollar amount that you got to follow the RFP process. Um, but some of my pricing came in between, say, forty and eighty thousand. So it falls underneath that hundred thousand mark where you got to go through compass and all that and uh so when stantec was in they had asked about it and i said yeah well we're going to do that Should, they said oh well we'll give you a proposal so they wanted a proposal to do the engineering to get the tank rehab done and their proposal was right around a hundred thousand just to do the engineering portion which is sand blessed tank and paint <laughs> <coughs> With the engineering portion, you know, they're, they're talking about putting together the bid package, sending it out to the vendors, you know, then reviewing the bids and awarding the bid, and then, you know, overseeing the What project. is this for? Just to get the tank rehab. The, you know. Just rehab the tank? Yeah. Upon Church Street? Yeah. So it's basically, you know, you, you sandblast down to bare metal on the inside, and then you recode it. We just did the, that. We're going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, How long ago was that gone? Probably 25, 30 years. That long? <laughs> well, guess what? One of the guys that was complaining about the chlorine, we never chlorined, was talking about the birds that got in the tank. <laughs> That's 25 years yeah. ago. <laughs> We never had the chlorine until the birds got in the tank. We <laughs> didn't have it for a long time after that either. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next time I'll see, I have to remind him about that. That's so what I was bad. Is there anything else on with the DEP? Um, Obviously, that's going to take priority if there's anything that they, you know, yeah. they need to comply with. We need, we, which we need to comply with. So the, the collection system evaluation, which is that professional and technical on the sewer side, and then the vulnerability study on the water side. Could you tell me what the um, pilot study is for the alum and the phosphorus? So that's, as you know, we're long overdue for our NIPTES permit. What are you looking at? Yep. Oh, yeah. That's for the discharge of... Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just trying to be a. I, I know that it's coming soon. <laughs> um, so when we get our new permit, all the permits that I've gone on and reviewed for any anyone around us has a 80 parts per billion alum limit, which we're way over because we use alum <coughs> uh, aluminum limit. Because we use a chemical that's <laughs> aluminum-based to treat for the phosphorus. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, instead of going through, and I talked to a, consult, a consultant that I used to use all the time, and he does pilot studies. And he said that with what we have for treatment, he says that he can get us to better numbers than you're going to get with a membrane filtration, which was supposedly one of the, you know, removes the most contaminants. Um, but you have to do a study to evaluate the chemical dosing and our treatment system and our, our wastewater. So they run it through kind of a mini system and they run it through and they do all these dosages and they change, and, you know, let's add this chemical and see how it reacts with your wastewater. Um, so they do all the different dosages and different chemicals to get you the best treatment option that results in the best water quality with the least amount of a chemical. <clears throat> so I had requested a price from him, I want to say probably three years ago. It was around 20, so I'm estimating it went up a little by now. <clears throat> and then the 
so the filter we have, the filters that we have, the cloth filters, um, it's kind of the final stage to catch anything before it goes out through the UV into the river. Um, those are the original, they're 15 years old, they have a lifespan of 10 years, so we're already overdue on those. So um, we got a price again, that was three years ago, we got a price and it was around that to uh, get those rehabbed. But between the two, um, we can change from a 10 micron filter to a 5 micron filter, which there's no price difference. It's just a matter of what we choose. And when I talked to the guy and went through some stuff with him uh, about the pilot study, he said that changing from the 10 to the 5, so he said if, you, if you're due for a filter, you'd go to the 5, just based on knowing that you're going to get a, an aluminum limit. And with the 5 micron filter instead of the 10 micron filter and changing from the alum to what they call a pack, it's polyaluminum chloride, um, he says it's, it's about three times more expensive for that chemical, but you use a quarter of it. So overall, you should save a little bit of money. The downfall is the, the um, shelf life on it is like 30 days. So we'll be getting a lot more chemical deliveries and the tank in there is way too big, so we'll probably be going to like a tote instead of a 3,000 gallon tank. <clears throat> And that would be more costly too, wouldn't it? Over the totes and well, no. If you, like I said, if it's if you if it's three times more expensive, but you only use a quarter of a quarter of as much. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. You're going to use a little bit less. You know, overall, you're going to use a lot less chemical, but it costs a lot more. So overall, you should save a little. It's a it's a higher end chemical, but uh, but that's what they do. The they do all the jar testing and everything to determine which, because there's like six different options for that chemical, and you just got to find which one works best for your, mm -hmm. your sludge, basically. <clears throat> All right, so, I said manholes can hold off, collection system repairs, I would Good hold off, but I think that you're. What well, I'm saying that you could maybe not do the full what we talked right. about. Right, so I, I think that one major one should get done. Mm -hmm. um, any of the smaller ones can be, you know, held off until either we have more staff and you know, whether we can, if it's in an area that we can either rent a small piece of equipment and do it ourselves or whatever to save some costs. Determine that later, but I would say the one needs to get done. Um, but we haven't done any sewer repairs. Uh, luckily, the one that I know that we should do is fairly shallow. You know, if it was on B Street, there'd be a whole nother ball game because yeah. that's about 20 feet that deep. Down. Yeah, yeah, that is deep. After I thought it was deeper than that. But. Yeah. When you first look at it, when you look at it, you're like, wow, whoa, whoa, I'm not going down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking down. Yeah. Now, the discussion on the, on the Gilboa pump rebuild. Yep. Um, we really want to communicate. I mean, we don't want to be going through and spending that money, yet, but we gotta, there's going to be. Well, that's to do with the, one of my problems is I, know, I don't want to spend the money and then we're going to rip it out. Rip it out and put another one in, but we can't. I can't wait on a pipe dream because yeah. that pump is down right now and yeah. if I don't get it done and the other yeah. one goes down, then we're paying someone to come right. in here and pump. So right. that's mm -hmm. gonna have to get done. Yeah. <coughs> so the siding and the painting of this building, that's a ballpark number. You probably have a better idea than me, but Yeah, I don't think we probably I mean the biggest I'm thing sure is just come a little less of a portion just to get that other portion done. Unfortunately, it's prevailing wage, so unless we've got somebody that's yeah. a single right. one-man show, we could probably get for something like this, but... Yeah. Um, There's guys around we get one man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to err on the safe side to yeah. make sure I don't I cut that say we're going to do it and then turn out and say, oh, crap, yeah. I don't have enough money, so I can't do it. We'll probably <clears> cut that in half. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm all for saving money, Josie, but I want to make sure you got enough to cover it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we don't use it, it just goes back into right, retained right, earnings. Yeah. That's fine, mm -hmm. but budget-wise, you want to make sure you have enough to cover the project. Yeah. So, like I said, that one I think I probably overestimated, but yeah. based on whoever we can get. Yeah, if we have a contractor with by himself, yeah. Yeah. you don't have to pay for minimum wage. Right. And that's not definitely a one man should sure do. How yeah. can you have two guys and just as long as they're both owners of the company? Oh, owners of the company? Oh, I see. So you can't just have one guy working and pay no. the wage on the other. No. Okay. They got all the bases covered, don't they? Strong unions. Collection system evaluation report. <clears throat> that one was uh, basically the I and I, and that is required. That's required, and that and that's required for in this bu this budget. Yeah, it's actually last year, but I keep trying to push it off. So is that a, is that a a hard number that you're putting in there? I'm guessing it's probably a little low. It's low? No, I think that's a low number. <coughs> so I'm pushing to get it done for less than what it is probably more realistically going to cost. So that's DEP required? Yeah. And that has to be done in this budget. Going to DEP, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So the next two are, you know, I guess that's, you guys can make that call. Um, I just think that the permit will be coming out soon, and if you, uh, if you can kind of do it. Proactively, it is nice to stay proactive. It's probably going to be less expensive than if we're crap. We got three months to get this done. And, <laughs> right. <you> know, <laughs> if it was a, a state permit and not a federal permit, I'd say we could probably blow it off because I can work with them on timelines. But EPA doesn't. They don't work with you. The EP, or EPA doesn't negotiate well. No. <laughs> You can give them all the supporting documentation and information you want, and they'll just say, oh, yeah, that's great. No, we still want it by May. <laughs> they won't budge. Mm -mm. And I've tried. So the uh, filter rehab, which out of these two, the, the pilot study or the, or the filter rehab, I wouldn't do the pilot study without doing the filter rehab. So this one would be number one. So I would do the filter rehab first. Yeah. And when you do the filter rehab, they could use that as part of the pilot. So when you have that filter rehab, they can run it through our filter instead of trying to set up their own mm -hmm. mock system. Oh, I see, yeah. <clears throat> I guess my thought was on something like that, maybe we could, if you have good, depending on where the priority is on that. I would is do to, is to put it towards the end of, so, the, of the end of the fiscal year, so that way there if there was extra money, you could tie it into. Well, theoretically, the way I would probably say realistically, I would put the filter rehab in this one, and the pilot in the next one, because by the time we get the filter done, it'll probably be going very close to the next fiscal year. So that's what I'm just right. Push it off. Push it off. That's so I would push off the pilot until the following. The fiscal year, and I would put the filter we have in for this fiscal year. So 21, FY21, FY22. Of those at once because I put in for half on the sewer side and then one and a half on the water side. And I know we had some conversations as to 
the other vehicle the half I would say you can probably blow off for another year but the one I would probably say you should act on is oh, the other vehicle is replacing the water truck and then taking the water truck and using that as the second vehicle but I wouldn't rely on it too long before we're going to be putting more money and maintenance into it than And I don't have a hard number on that. I had requested one even before our first budget meeting. The guy at uh, MHQ didn't email me the prices yet, so I'm still waiting on him. So I'll have to go check my phone. I can tell you when he said he was going to have it to me. So the truck. So if that half you wanted to wait, that's up to you guys on it. FY22, FY23, whichever way you want to. Those are those trucks now. I would hold on to that. On the half. Oh, eight. And Just given the fact that so much of that, it, there's so many things that you're putting forth this year. Yeah. So that's 12 years old. Yeah. Oh. No, that, no question. We, we, we are going to need to replace it. But it's just a matter of what we want to do with this year, given the, given the circumstances that mm -hmm. we have a lot of things that he let put forth that need to get done. Uh, That's something we could always put off until next year. <clears throat> yeah, I think the half truck, I would definitely, I think, for us just looking, I think that that would be, we can hold that until the FY22 if possible. Wireless modem for the SCADA. So what that is, is right now, the alarm system, the computer system, everything that runs the treatment plant runs off of a phone line, which is kind of the second line here. Um, but pretty much every day, Peter has to go in and call it to make sure it's going to work, because it seems like it's working. But if you can call it from an outside number and it goes to the answer machine, then the, the SCADA system's not actually calling out alarms. So he has to reboot everything restart it and call again and if it goes to the SCADA system when he calls instead of going to the answer machine then we know that it's working but it's kind of a crapshoot so it's something with that phone line mm -hmm. um, so the Ari Erickson the company that installed all that mm -hmm. they recommended going to a wireless modem so it'll basically and that, and that's, be and that's, that's a fix that's not, an, that's not just exploratory <coughs> to see if it works Right. That's a fix. That's a fix. <clears throat> so that is <coughs> the one time cost is probably around the thirty five hundred to get everything done with that. But then there's a recurring cost, so it's gonna be another Verizon wireless yeah. thing that you're paying for. Small number. Yeah. the one uh, but again this is one of those where it's kind of a recurring cost mm -hmm. that we should go from pump to pump to pump um, but the primary pump is kind of different than the other pumps like we have two turbine pumps which are you know, they're a vertical turbine so it's a shaft with the impellers that go all the way down into the well that's a completely different type rehab that I'm talking about than the primary pump. The primary pump's a physical pump on top that we can take off, set down, have them rebuild it, and bring it back and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so that one, I don't think I would wait another year on that, but that 15,000 is kind of a throwing darts at the wall number. Question mark on the actual number. Yeah, and I'm going to see. I've been pushing, but uh, Mike DeBar at DEP, he runs the, the gap funding program there. Yeah. Which is part of what we use to get the, the lighting done here. So, 
part of that I would try to try to push that we're doing it as an energy conservation thing mm -hmm. and if I can tell them I want to rebuild the pump and have the impeller and the balut coated the, like the ceramic coating that they do supposedly it increases the efficiency tremendously so if I can kind of lump that all in as we want to rebuild the pump trying this to see if it's more efficient um, I might be able to get them to fund some of it would so, they fund the new one? No. No? <laughs> um, we already did motors on them. So oh. we already put the high efficiency motor oh, on Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a new pump, the only way is if you, if the old pumps were just a <coughs> completely inefficient type pump, um, which it's not for a high, high head pump. So yeah. My only option is if I can put a spin on it and say that we're going to. We're having the pump redone to put the ceramic coating in as opposed to rebuild the pump. That's a pump. We well, just told them what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see many of them watching my meeting. <laughs> but So the turbine well rehab. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have done one here or not. Do you know if you've ever rehabbed that that well? I don't think so. So what the well rehab is on a vertical turbine, you pull the pump out and then they've got, you know, it's a big, basically a big shaft that goes down and then it's got a screen down in the bottom um, with all the, the sand and gravel around the screen so the water comes through, the, through that. Well, it builds up with iron, manganese, just clogs up with particles and you start losing your efficiency on your well. So typically every 10 years or so, they say you should rehab the well. So what they do is they come in with a crane and all this equipment, and it's a big plunger basically, just this gasket type thing with some plates, and they just go up and down with it. They add a caustic chemical first mm -hmm. so that it you know, raise the pH way up. You plunge it like that, and while they're plunging, they pump it out to get all the stuff that they break free, and then they go the other way, and they put in an acid, and they do it again. So you go in both, both spectrums of the pH to break down whatever's built up in there. The, the screen's getting plugged with iron and manganese. A lot of the chemicals are the stuff that, uh, that blocks screens. Typically, some things dissolve or break free better with acid and some break free with caustic. So they go through those two processes and then they flush it all and pump all that out um, basically to try to regenerate your well back to new. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that process is. I know it hasn't been done since I've been here. And looking at it when I came in, I'm sure it was many years before that mm -hmm. that that one's been done. Um, when did they put turbine in? When was that? Turb early 80s. Late, late 70s. Late 70s? Oh. Late 70s, early 80s. I would say 70s. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going down there as a kid. All right. So that could, I mean, technically, that sounds could, like it could be pushed off to the next year. That, too. <laughs> that you could push <laughs> off, but. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it could get done, but. Is there any sign that we're losing efficiency? Um, not so much at turbine, although I don't know what it was originally pumping. Um, but just looking at what they approved your pumping rates for, running it wide open, we don't get near what they approved us for. Mm -hmm. Whether that pump, when they put it in, actually did what you got approved for, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and up until I started tracking everything, which was halfway through when Dave was here, and Dave refused to do it, so I used to run around and get all the numbers myself. But so I, I don't have data from previously on well drawdowns and all that stuff. We track it all now, like very detailed. So I don't have the historical stuff to really give you an idea whether or not you've slowly diminished. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we should definitely put that up for next year. But that's just one, and then you've got 
Glenn, and then Glenn's mm -hmm. submersible primary we do ourselves because it's a mm -hmm. two meter well film. Although I may uh, I may subcontract Dave to come in and teach Steve how to do primary. That's a good idea. Just because there's little nuances with mm -hmm. that one, and Dave's done it multiple times. Can we do that? Can we? Yeah. 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 That's just going to be paying Dave like a week's salary or something. Yeah, but he'll do it. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Dave still stops down here all the time. Did we do some repairs to primary? Um, the building itself? Mm. No, I got a price um, to get some of that stuff done, but then I got to get some other prices. Well, I thought we'd done something. We've done some work ourselves, mostly inside though. So wasn't that, didn't that quote you got was about half of that, wasn't it? Can you get it? Yes, but that wasn't all the things that needed to be done. Um, I yeah. thought that was, in, wasn't that including some work down here too? Or was that not included? No, that didn't include this. I thought he came down here. He was supposed okay. to, but he never did. <coughs> um, so I think after I got that quote, you said you wanted to have, have him give us a quote on this here, and he never gave me a quote on this here. <coughs> That was all more carpentry work. Yeah. And then there's some uh, masonry work that we got to get done. Yeah, and then that was like two years ago. We talked about getting some of that repointed. Yeah. But I think it's a little more than repointing because when I went over there, the brick is like falling apart on some of those areas. And the, with the, with the generator is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's from the generator. I think it's more because that's the containment area where the, the uh, KOH is. I think the KOH fumes is getting to it. <coughs> so, then I'll do a question back on the C1. Which one? On the, the, we're going to do some repairs, but just the actual amount of what we're going to do, because you got yeah, 17, 5, and 9, 15 is the other one. So. Yeah, the 17, 5 is, is definitely a boosted up number. Yeah. I want to say it was like eight, eight something, eight and seven fifty or something. That rings a bell. I'm thinking somewhere around there. But then Still I have no idea there. how much a uh, uh, masonry. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'd be shooting from the hip on that one. I did get a a number for a, a one man show masonry guy. I saw him doing a chimney, so I stopped and asked him. It's a one man show, so mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna get a decent price from him. What about the guy we use? this car again. Who do you use? Oh, I'll take it out. Take it out. He's pretty good. He is good. He's he really good. good. The you know, Oxford guy? Two Douglas. Douglas is on Orange, yeah. on, uh, Orange Street. So just a race motocross with a ticket. <laughs> I've used him two or three times, and it seems to be pretty good. Yeah. A one man show? Yeah, I think he is. Get me his number. Fence repairs. Yeah, we get a lot of fence repair we need to do. Both water and wastewater. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we put that into 22. Oh, that's what I was going to say. That can be. Maybe I guess we'll hold off a little more. Some of the stuff down here I guess can hold off more. There's one that I'd like to get done is the Colonial. I don't know if you've gone up by there, but that fence is like leaning over, like an upward of the concrete. Mm -hmm. It's like leaning almost on the building there. So it just makes it a terrible... Where is it? Which one? The Colonial Pump the Station. Colonial. Oh, yeah, drive yeah, by it, you'll see. <clears throat> But that wouldn't be anywhere near this cost. Yeah. This is factored in colonial plus a bunch of stuff down here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, the tree stump did a lot of damage to us. I know I used to always ask, when Willie was here, Willie used to always keep the keep fence the line, all keep it trimmed nice. But we had some big trees come down. Oh, on the biggest stump. Yeah. yeah, that came down right on it and like broke the bars. Yep. Pipe and supplies for the cemetery. Well. What cemetery is that? Cemetery Street. Oh, Cemetery Street. Yeah. So, there's two of them. The, you know, it's Northwest Lot. I don't know what that would be. Well, is that to replace the water line? Or? Yeah, so Northwest Main, that's to complete the loop that we already started. And we ran down from oh, yeah. church down, so we got like 550 feet to go. But the cemetery, I don't know how long I would put that off. Um, I try to talk with John all the time as to what projects are going on, where he plans on paving and all that stuff. Um, and cemetery was high on his list. That he wants to get done, but that pipe on cemetery is an old cast iron line, and the valve you can't. We don't even know which way it turns because you get mm -hmm. two of us on there with big bars, and we can't get it to move either way. So the valve doesn't work, so I have no way to shut it down. Um, so at some point, something happens on there. You know as well as I do, cemetery won't get paved again for who knows how long. <laughs> yeah. So is the line in the right in the road or is yeah. it this side? Okay. It's it's on the side, but it's in the road. What did they plan on doing the cemetery? He wanted to do it last year, and uh, he agreed that we try to try to replace the water line ourselves. Yeah. You know they would dig and we'll replace it. There's only one stub off of that that I know of, and I'm still not sure if the line goes all the way down cemetery. All the plans say it comes down and then goes down A, but doesn't continue down. But I'm not positive because when we did a new service line for the guy at the bottom of, of cemetery, mm -hmm. his water line came out to Cemetery Street. So I don't know if it was like northeast or northwest Main where they came out this way and then ran it down along the side of the road down to mm -hmm. B Street, mm -hmm. or if they got a pipe in there and nobody ever documented. So I don't know. So I don't know until we come down, <clears throat> but we definitely need to replace from Gilboa down to A cemetery but there's no connections off of that except for one that abandoned lot I think we had this conversation yeah we did yeah. the uh, okay so then I think we, we could probably try to put that in for this 21 yeah, I would try to do cemetery on 21 and then do northwest on 22 yeah one I split the portable generator between water and sewer uh, I don't have a definite on the price yet I'm thinking I estimated a little bit high just to try to be on the safe side for right now uh, if I can get some numbers in before we finalize all this I can adjust them but we need the portable generator to cover booster Gilboa and turbine <coughs> so that we're not buying stationary for all three. So I'd rather get one portable generator. It's just that much less on maintenance than everything else. You maintain a one generator and between yeah. those three stations we can move it to where we need to. You know, booster we only need to run, you know, if we were in an emergency situation we'd run both pumps instead of just one. And we could fill the tank in like four hours. So you run that for four hours and you get for almost three days. And then you can go use it at the turbine. Yeah. And if need be, you know, turbine would run. So in an event like hours. that, is there is there a instead of putting out that much capital uh, on something they may or may not use? Yeah. Is there a, is it like a United Rentals that you could rent and what the cost versus buying something that's cheaper to rent it? Oh yeah. And bring it back. But. Yeah. You'd have to get an agreement in place with them that they would guarantee it, and they're mm -hmm. going to charge you every year just to have that agreement in place. Mm -hmm. 
So that could be like $5,000 that they want just to guarantee that they'll have one if there's an emergency. Because places like Worcester or mm -hmm. you know, Chicopee or you know big towns, they rent stuff all the time from them. So yeah, they're going to, you know, if we go in there and we've never rented a generator from them and all of a sudden, hey, we need one and everybody else is out due to an ice storm or whatever, yeah. we're not going to get one. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say is 10 to 1 if we need one, everybody else needs one. Right, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what a lot, because yeah. a lot of the towns do, and a lot of comp companies do. They don't want to get into the owning equipment. Right, right, right. 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 They just rent, rent it when they need it and then bring yeah. it back and yeah. on, a, on a live capital item. Yeah. Right. So that's what, yeah. so I guess something just could be explored. Well, in other words, they may charge you a fee to make sure they have it. So what they're going to Just to guarantee you're at the top of the it. list to get it before everybody else, because like you said, Nine times out of ten, if we're in a situation that we need one, to have the, other, else, half, yeah, half the state needs it. Right. And they have to the inventory their products accordingly. Yeah. So they would go out and buy one just to have it. Right. You know. But like that, I said. That's it, half the cost of buying it. And if you look at it, what they're going to charge you just mm -hmm. to guarantee that they have one for you in the if event that the you case. need one, yeah. after you do that so many years, you would have bought it yourself. Right. I mean, we've done this long without it. Yeah, but when we redid Turbine, <laughs> right. Turbine was set up to to have the generator run it. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, and we've done well, because whenever we had multiple day outages, I think the tank was already full. Yeah, mm. Yeah. knock on wood. Yeah. Since I've yeah. been here, we haven't run into an issue at Booster that we were out yeah, of power for yeah, long Booster. enough. I said, you know what I meant. I know what you meant. <laughs> Um, yeah, if we put it off, we know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, because you have you have the replacement for the primary generator in here. For yeah. the, unfortunately, that one went up in smoke like two months ago. Which one? Primary. Did that really? Yeah, you weren't here for the budget meeting. It happened what three days before our budget meeting. <clears throat> so less than two months ago. What failed? The generator end of it looked like it caught on fire or something. Hmm. So the end inside still works, but the replacement cost for the generator end was like 18 or 19 grand just to replace the, mm -hmm. the, end of the electrical producing end. So now you've got a 20 year old generator yeah. that you're paying almost $20,000 to get that mm -hmm. end replaced. <clears throat> Too bad we didn't build the generator under the cost of doing booster. Yeah, I really thought of that. So that that's, has to get done, that's so. <laughs> yeah, that priority. Yeah, that one. The replacement for the primary. That's a little fly. Um I think we should explore the explore the uh, portable. Portable. Just to see, and then replace the generator. Replacement at the primary. That's a that's a that's the main thing, yeah. And then the uh, put off the. Well, when you're one. looking at pricing out the primary one, we ought to get a quote on the portable one. I'll get prices for yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, maybe we get yeah. a deal. You buy yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. get yeah. a two. Buy one, get one free. Yeah, buy yeah. one, get yeah. one. It's <laughs> like price check. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. That'd be nice. If I did that, but. I think you know the reality on that one. Yeah, and it's going to happen. No. Never know. The, uh, so we'll check the, uh, get a price on the price. And yeah, these were rental. These were ballpark numbers. Uh, I'll get more solid numbers. The problem with the primary one is it's 600 volts, so it's kind of a, an oddball. Nobody uses 600 anymore, so. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder generator to find than the, the four units. Okay. So I'm guessing he'll hold off on the 50 50 truck. <laughs> yeah. So, what about the replacement water truck? I think we need a 
tally the numbers first before we get. I mean, I think it, there's no doubt it should be replaced, but let's uh, tally all the numbers and then see where we sit. And if we have to squeak another year, like I said, it hasn't it hasn't been going to give us problems too much, but it's good. If it starts giving us problems, it's going to be it's throwing good money at bad. Yeah. And it should be you know, for a primary. Say, that's, that's your main vehicle that right. you rely on for everything. Yeah. And the F-250 has a transmission issue that it's had since we bought it, but it just seems to be getting worse. Um, Jared finally got some codes on it, so we sent it down to Valley Transmission. We are supposed to send it to him around now to have him go through and do whatever it needs, but so we'll be down another vehicle. We'll only have one, so I don't know how long it's going to take him down there. But. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we might have to do a, a rental of something until he gets finished doing whatever he's doing down there. I mean, we definitely do need another vehicle, but I just want to just maybe put that at the end of the list and see where we... Yeah, let me get some more firm numbers, too. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I was going to say, get that. <clears throat> So that's good. So that's a price. January 9th, he was supposed to get me a price. That's when he called and said he was going to email me over pricing. But when? January 9th. And you got him, haven't got him yet? No. That's not bad, only a month. Okay. So this is this is everything, right? For both uh, uh well, I, I, I forgot things, but well, I mean <laughs> what we have is <laughs> yeah. not there's not another sheet. No, that was it for her for tonight. That's it for what I put in right now. <clears throat> I was hoping we would get by long enough on the Gilbo until something happened down here because I was talking about it. But. I, I was thinking that in my head. We were talking about it. I'm like, hopefully, yeah. it would be nice to get some. Let's take a look down there. Okay. Can I get into the weeds now? Yeah. Um, Jump right in. Dave, the IT guy. Yeah, I probably have to go up on that number. I forgot all about that. But. Which one? Uh, the IT IT contract. contract. What line? What number is that? That ain't fifty three zero zero eight. It's proven to be a lot more expensive than it used to be. Yeah, I just signed an invoice that was really out of this world. Thousand dollars. Yeah, I was a little shocked. Oh yeah, me too. Almost wasn't gonna sign it, but that right. doesn't get me anywhere. Because I looked at it These saying, two signed it. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it saying, all right, a thousand dollars to upgrade to Windows 10, and I probably could have replaced one of the two computers that they worked on for the thousand bucks, and it would come with Windows 10. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <clears throat> but anyway, I just wanted to blurt that out, and yeah. then. That, that one caught me off guard too. Is mm. then my other question. Um, so is that number adequate? Are you saying it should increase that or decrease that? What do you think? Well, I don't know. I just like I said, so just got a thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll a bill for a thousand bucks. Yeah. So I'm not sure, but I don't see us needing to upgrade to Windows 12 or whatever comes out next. No. This next fiscal year, I mean, we just did it. If they turn around and tell me I got to upgrade again in the next fiscal year, I'm not going to be too happy. So. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, mean, I still got Windows 7 at work. Yeah, I still got Windows <laughs> XP on mine. Five. Josie, you threw yours out the window. What yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just not aware how to use it. Yeah, Josie keeps knocking on the window, wondering where the screen comes up. <laughs> 
I'm a fan of the Apple products. Oh, that's, that's my next. I'm gonna buy a Mac. But they don't slow down. They don't have any issues. But it's not a cheap. They're not cheap either. I just went look twenty seven hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, for Pro MacBook Pro. Yeah. yeah. But this See, last, I, I got a guy. <laughs> I got a guy. You gotta have a guy. See, I got a guy. What? I bought a used laptop for a hundred and a half. Windows 10 on it. But see, you gotta know a guy. Well, if you're gonna buy the Mac, <laughs> if you're gonna buy the Mac, wait until Sammy goes to college. Yeah. yeah. So then once he gets his student ID, he's yeah. gonna get all kinds of deals when you get to the Apple discount. Buy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, cell phones. I had a question on cell phones. For um, cell phones, fifty-three four hundred four. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we discussed some of that at the last meeting. Um, some of that increases the modem for the SCADA computer. Okay. Um, and then there was also discussion on getting Peter and the, the head water and the head sewer guy phones. Um, part of the problem is is. We had the 2400 line as a backup, and it went to the other station. So if you had an issue, you could get a call out. But when we're having phone line issues here, that line got terminated to those two buildings. So we have to make some modifications at those buildings for an emergency switch, or like a panic switch. Uh, so we're already working towards getting that stuff installed, because once you disconnect those lines, they're not putting them back in. So that was one of the things that, as of January, they won't, they're not working on or fixing or anything with the old copper lines. Hmm. Well, I, I kind of think, that, I mean, not that I want to spend the money, but they should have, they need to be, you have to have some communication. Yeah. You know? <coughs> I think it should be the, you know, Peter and Steve, the two top guys. That Just the, yeah. 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 That, that should have. That. And then. Because realistically, if there was ever a need on the, you know, the call. And one of the problems is, you know, and they don't the radio, there's no, there's no the radio in the truck, so it's kind of, yeah. I mean, no, it's, 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 but loudspeakers on, and, you know, what are right. they, they, yeah. they don't talk to the truck anymore. Those days are over. Yeah. And I was holding off a little, because um, I'm part of the radio study group. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. And there was, was some talk to getting rid of the portable radios and going to like the Nextel style cell phones where you get to push the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think that got squashed. Did it? Yeah, so. That, that isn't digital, is it? You still on a 900? Yeah, that's still the old line. Yeah. Yeah, digital's. They're switching everything. And digital's phenomenal. But I think we just, what was it, like 250 grand? At the last town meeting, oh, for the, that got approved for the radio stuff. But it looks like that's not going to be enough. So, yeah. But we just had a meeting yesterday to go through what was needed. So there's discussions on all the the towers and renting the tower in Webster and adding. I think it was three towers they were talking about. So one would be the the cell tower that we use now. Yeah. And renting a spot on the the one over next to the Webster line there. Uh, and the third one was either by the water tank or at the Franklin Street tank or the high school. I think they were leaning towards the high school. The Franklin Street tank's higher than the high school, isn't it? Yeah, but there were some other advantages to the high school. High school.
not be 2700 less. I want to drop it down some. <coughs> on the water side. Okay. So I did that last year on one of the things too. I'm like, oh man. On the capital on that, on the silver, what the, the increase in 25 of that? So that was part of the. Which one? On the silver? Yeah. Alright, so some of that is, like I said, you're 15 years old. We got blowers that are near end of life. A lot of the electricals near end of life. So that capital item. Is probably going to be a routine higher number now. Um, so just, and that's even outside of the actuators that I already put in, because the, the actuators aren't quite as as routine as the rest. You know, mm -hmm. we got blowers that are all starting to get near near end of life hours. Um, so where are we on the? We look at the like the FY. Uh, well, again, this is part of. Of um, continual, I see you saying on the just. Yeah, so it's a matter of whether that goes into capital or repairs and maintenance or replacement equipment or, right. you know, it's whichever bucket she seems to classify it this year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that was the intent behind that is we know we have things coming up that are going to. You gotta start spending some money to, to get them back where they need to be. Do we know what's in retained earnings? Not off the top of my head. Then I gotta look at what they deem retained earnings and what we have separated out in the different buckets. Oh, certified, right? Certified free cash, and it's broken down. Yeah, a well, out of that. certified free cash is town hall speed. Enterprise, it's retained earnings. So yeah. <laughs> so our retained earnings is our certified free cash. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but I think then, on the state form, I think it says uh, free. Does it say free cash? No, it's, it's retained earnings. Oh, does it on, yeah. the, on the state mm -hmm. form? On the recap? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's retained earnings, okay. but internally we have. Some of that broken out as this is reserved for system development. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it has the whole number at the right. They 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 tallied up in the. They have the whole thing, yes. but some of that Gene's like, well, you can't touch this because that's yeah. set aside for whatever. Okay. Oh, I can't stop I know. All right. So then, what do we have? Uh, water. So this should be, this should be 20, right? Oh, I didn't fix it in water? No. Yeah. 21. Yeah. We're going to have a little more than one Oh, man. And this should be 20, right? Yes, yeah, 20, 20. And then you got to change that middle column. To what it says on the first one. <clears throat> yep. So salaries was an uh, increase from 942. So that's for the part of the fully staffed plan. Yeah. Okay. okay. Health insurance, we don't do anything with that. So I did have somebody come in uh, this week, actually. Uh, maybe it was Friday. Came in Friday. It was uh, Eli told him to come down. So he works in Natick now. And he does both water and sewer. He doesn't have a sewer license, but he does all the 
pull on the pumps and everything on the pump stations. The wastewater. Uh, he lives in Sutton, but he works in Nag. Mm. But he, uh, I want to say he said he's like 2775 right now. And he would be, a, if we. He's got a T1 license. He said he took his D2 test, but he didn't submit whatever he needed to get his license. So he said he could take that test again easy enough. Um, for the water? Well, like I said, he does, he's not opposed to getting a wastewater license. He's got one water license, but not a distribution license. So he's got the treatment, but not the distribution. Um, but he works on pulling all the wastewater pumps now at all their pump stations. Uh, he does distribution work and he does works in the treatment plant. The water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. the native. So, <clears throat> but they're like, they pump four million gallons a day. So yeah. it's a much bigger system. But. So that would be, what, would, what title would that, what you were thinking of something? Um, based on his licenses and stuff, it would probably be the second water operator. Okay. But we would cross train them to do both yeah. anyway. I, mean, I think everybody in the department should be cross trained also. Yeah, but too small not to be. Right. But he said he was at 27, and he said, oh, I need to be right around there because, you know, I got bills to pay. And I said, well, I'm you'd, be, you'd yeah. be saving a lot of gas yeah. and, you know, wear and tear on yeah. your vehicle, and you get an extra hour of sleep, and, you know, <laughs> you're not sitting in traffic. What is the... Uh, you know, if you work in there, you got a two-hour drive all day, you know, during the day, back and forth. We'll have to look week. at the compensation plan and see where, it, does it fall anywhere close to what? I think it could fall within that structure. But then again, it depends on what, because that, you yeah. know, we've had the conversation about the titles and yeah. what's where, but. I know. Um, there is some wording in the. In I the, think that uh, was getting worked on. Can't get work done? It yeah. is. It's in the process. Because yeah, I thought there were three or four things in there that needed to be told. Oh, that, there's a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of things. I've got the kind of the format that we're going to rewrite them all, so okay. I want to get that from Matt. So. Yeah. I actually went through, I read through the um, policies, procedures. It's like 85 pages of <laughs> stuff. Oh, I've got them. So, um, they were, I, I was just refresh myself on a lot of that. There is some wording in there that you can talk with uh, Matt on the on the pay. If the I, I have to see how exactly what's worded, but he could he I could think he can override. he can override that if, they, you, can, if you can demonstrate. Yeah, you can't get anybody for what yeah, I've already mm -hmm. talked about that too. That was one of the things I had started with yeah. Mike Kaczynski. And then Mike had told him before he started that, yeah. you know, we need to work on that down here. So, right. and then I talked to him. So, it is in the, the works yeah. on that as well. But I got to start with the job descriptions. Yeah. So that's the first step in the whole process. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I did read it. Did, it does lay out how that's supposed to take place. The the responsibility of the personnel board, the responsibility of Matt, the responsibility of our department as well. And while we're on the on that, just a quick thing on the personnel thing is that we probably should get print out, get, get every, a copy for everybody of the staff. And then, because the la very last page of that personnel policy procedures is they're supposed to sign that they oh, received yeah. it. Right. So we should probably make sure everybody has a, <laughs> has a copy. Has a copy. Job description. And, and that last page gets put in the file with with uh, of the personnel that they received it. The personal they may not agree with it, but bylaws yes. or the, oh, everybody's oh, done that. They have done that. Yeah. That they've received the. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure because I think I, we've updated that twice where we had everybody sign. Okay. Because they just did the new that we just passed to get a town meeting. I think it was. Oh, the policies were just approved in. Uh, I think it was March. Of last then, year. March third, I think it was, and then the bylaw was done at town meeting. The amendments to the bylaw. Which which yeah, gave. I have to check on which. Which gave Matt, Matt the, laid out a little more his authority on, on the, on the bylaw. <coughs> to check to make sure the most current one was signed off on. Yeah. But I think 
because we do it and they all, the signed copies all go to Suzanne. Okay. So I went through it then the very last one. I'm like, geez, we got to make sure we stay. Yeah, no, we, Suzanne keeps up. Yeah, we yeah. say she would keep up with all that stuff. Okay. Maybe. It's like an HR thing. Yeah. yeah. But they should make sure they get an, update, an updated copy of Right. What was no, we give them the whole thing and then we take the last page and right. we print them on blue paper for whatever reason. But okay. we had them on blue paper. Or a blue paper department. the supplies water yeah that one's a big from 10 to 20 yeah we're already at 11,000 this year so that was based on what you said looking at where we stand now and do we have enough mm -hmm. So that's where that that's where that jump came from. Because I looked at it, we're already at eleven thousand out of ten thousand, so we're already at hundred and twelve percent. And we're a little over fifty percent through the year, so mm -hmm. okay. we're at fifty uh, percent, we're only at six thousand. That's sewer. Oh. The same, they use the same, uh, they're the same, same number. Okay, I was thinking yeah. of a different number, that's why. No, see, here's how <clears throat> all, all the individual numbers are the same. <clears throat> it's this number that changes between the water and sewer. 6044 is the sewer, 6045 is cool. okay. the water. I just don't put that number here because too many unnecessary numbers for us. Mm -hmm. Public work supplies. There was an increase of seven. That one I'll have to go back and look. Rentals and leases. That one jumped from one to five for any reason. Um, that was partially figuring that we're going to have to rent some, uh, well, rent a truck for one when we get the other one repaired. again. Those are the big ticket ones that I can only see on that. Dead, I have some. I don't know if I get it all in or not. Pretty sure I get the whole dead in. Um, 
Gene was supposed to send me the post account retirement and so is that number? Some of the other stuff today. Is that an increase? Why are we increasing? Is that what they want us to do on the OPEP? Yeah, they said that we didn't have enough. So that's one that I guess you guys could uh, blow off for another year if you want to save that grain. Five between each. But they had a evaluation done. They said mm -hmm. we weren't contributing it enough. But what is the what is the? Uh, I didn't get the full numbers yet. She was supposed to get that me too. But so what is the town? I guess there must be a formula that they arrive at. There is. They have the whole thing. They have water sewers separated out. Okay. So I would say whatever the, whatever the, town. the town's doing consistently will be consistent with them as well. Well, the town, they have to jump theirs up as well. I don't know what they jumped it up, though. Right. Must be a cost but associated per employee of some sort. I don't know the value that they must use. I'm not sure how they arrive at that, so. Yeah, me either, because it's other post-employment benefits. So that'd be like a couple people that are outside, that aren't here anymore that right. we still pay benefits to. Um, I forget how it worked, but I know we weren't doing it right originally. Mm -hmm. So there's a backup that they have to catch up. Yeah, I remember it was unfunded, not mm -hmm. unfunded, but yeah, unfunded. It was like just do something, yeah. so we do right, something. Right, that's what we did. We did something, yeah. and I said, mm -hmm. well, we'll leave it at something until you tell me otherwise. Yeah, yeah but they got to give us the numbers. And right? that's it. I asked her, and she says, yeah, you're under. You know, they did the evaluation. She's supposed to get me all the numbers of what they came up with so I could see how long it would take us based on, you know, whatever we jumped up. <coughs> um, but it's, like I said, I don't think it would kill us to go another year at what we have been doing. Yeah. And I can get the full report from her and see where we stand. And I would recommend doing that. That's what I was going to say. I would almost say, let's go back to the five on those. And if we have to go to 11 next year yeah. instead of... Yeah, do it. Yeah. What's the, what's the, uh, what's that the total, what's that the, what's undefined? Where is it? Which one do you want? Right underneath that. Is that the same? How was that? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, that that's just the total. So we are we so that's that? the line item and then the total. I total up each each section. Okay. So it's just the total, but there's only one, so it's the same number. Okay. It was a, it was a different format than the line. The other ones I was looking to see on that. So. It totaled up the grand totals versus you have it each line. Well, I'm saying, let's see how you got the totaled up with what this is, totaled up to where this is. Yeah. And this total yeah, to no, this I one didn't. I didn't have yeah. it under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, I thought we maybe even account for it twice. I, I did the same thing myself. I'm like, what the hell is this other number? Yeah. Playing out a little it is. More, yeah, it's yeah. always stresses me out trying to get it done. And then uh, we can go through this and total about that and see what we have. And then maybe get a few quotes, some firmer numbers on a couple of things. Yep. So should we schedule another a budget meeting in two weeks? Or do you want to wait another month? I'm only doing two weeks and get it over with. Two. We're always late. Well, I'm thinking two weeks. I don't think we'll probably well, they, not be done. Off, I think blow us off from the end of everything. Yeah, I mean the numbers that we the, the health insurance, all that stuff like that. We're not. I'm not so concerned because that that's good. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, those numbers we can't change. No, <clears throat> just the ones we have control of, and, and uh, make sure we have everything. So we're not forgetting anything. Well, we're in two on. weeks, or I think we probably should, and then yeah, and then if we need to, then finalize it at the, right. the next budget. Following me, <clears throat> so if there's any loose ends that we don't. Yeah. Get through. Uh, I'm going to check. I don't know if they've got me on schedule for capital yet either. Um, I don't know if 
if you guys wanted to just submit kind of the same typical capital ones well, I do. I or, was reviewing that as well. And if you look at the, the uh, FY21, it's a 21 capital plan that was submitted. It's on the, on the, the articles. Has a list of what and what years they projected to do. <coughs> it's an approved plan, but not funded. It just says that right. they projected this. But you can move around. Project and keep moving the dates up. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. they'd be depending on what because it was Davis Street was on there, and then also Gilmore Street. But it was a matter of how they wanted to. Did you want to put it in this year or that year? So I don't know if that makes a difference on anything. Well, that's. But we got to. Kind of what I'm getting at is we got to communicate with EDC and, and Matt. And, yeah, well, I, I always have to go before then. Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean, yeah, EDC for what's going on up here? Yeah. Oh, Matt, I mean, even with just a Matt, I think, because realistically, we need, to, we need to make sure we work hand in hand with, I mean, I'm just like to come up with ideas. Yeah. You know, Matt's going to be that, and so you're the liaison between Matt and us to get, that we know what they're going, so just kind of. So well, we that's why it. a lot of these things, you know, I bring a lot of them up to the Capitol, even though. Yeah. Some of them are things that we're going to do, and it doesn't really affect them. But I go to Capitol saying, all right, here's what I need to do. So the priority changes as to whatever else is going on in town. Mm. You guys know because they all come to you. So that's where I kind of, yeah. my priorities can change. If you tell me they're moving forward with the stuff down Davis Street, <laughs> yeah, I'll move that to my priority over this. All right. Um, <clears throat> I mean, at some point, they're gonna, the Capitol is going to, I mean, they need, they need, we need infrastructure improvements, and if they're really going to get serious about, mm. you know, development and economic, economic development, the town's going to have to fund some of these projects. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they've been on there for 10 years, and, not, and they haven't been funded. They've been kicked and kicked, and so right. it's... But there's some that I added last year, like Main Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've got to be over 10 now, breaks on Main Street. Yeah. So at some point... The brakes are costing us more than it would right. have been to just replace right. the damn line. Right. So, and that's our main transmission line yeah. for that whole end of town. So, yeah, I mean, you look what a, a debt schedule will be on the cost of that. I bet you we're close to. We've already paid that out in, in repairs. Repairs, so yeah. For, you know, it would cost annually for a, right. a, a debt schedule. Mm -hmm. on that. Right. So, you know, that's one that I think. I think that kind of took priority for me this year. Is at least do that section between Franklin and Booster Station. Because we've already got stubs lined up that were the end of <laughs> new projects before. Mm -hmm. So it's that section is already there, ready to go. And I would say that that would be my next priority one. And this over here, I think, would probably hold off until we see what they're doing down here and lump all that into one big project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this over here, same thing. You know, if that project's going to move forward, that'll take precedence. This project, all of a sudden, they say this is moving faster than that. You know, whichever of these two projects, I would say that's going to steer what these two are. Mm -hmm. But both of those are more development type projects, which I think that needs to be a discussion with the town as to you know who's paying for what. What right? It'll be a. There'll be a split portion obviously on a lot of right. this stuff. I mean I think this line we have more opportunity for revenue that line very little revenue uh, so I mean that's more of an economic development this is still a lot more economic <laughs> development than <coughs> Main Street Main Street's kind of a you know this is more we already have this here it's just end of life mm -hmm. Whereas this one needs to be increased to get more flow down here for economic development. Same with that going down there. I mean, that's we're not going to get any revenue out of that. That's two and a half million dollars to get us basically what we would get from one or two houses. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on what was in there, what the uses are. Right. But based on what I've seen and heard, yeah. it's a couple of well, few toilets. bathrooms and that's it's it. a few bathrooms and a lot of fire protection. Yeah, that's what a lot of that's on the biggest bulk of it's fire protection. Mm. Yeah, so that would be more heavily town sided. Mm -hmm. This would be still a lot of town, but probably not quite as big of a split yeah. as that one. Um, the main street, I think, is something that we need to look at. And 
from Franklin to now we go Franklin yeah. to Booster first. Yeah, Booster, yeah. You know, that's that one straight shot right there. You know, water's on this side, it's going to go on this side. So you can leave that active, go right down, do what you got to do, put your stubs in off to the side, you know, have everything in and ready, and then uh, when we got everything done and tested, then we switch over. Uh, and I probably look at from Franklin all the way up to basically almost the tank. So all of Main Street right up to camp meeting yeah. needs to be done. That's all old cast. And then it would be going up towards the tank. <clears throat> but that would be later. We haven't really had any issues there. And I think that would be less... We have three breaks, breaks there from Booster to camp meeting? Oh, more than that. We had, we had three in one day. Yeah. So the three in one day, and then we had... Well, that's from Booster there. We had two almost at the same spot yeah. at the belly between Franklin and Booster. Mm -hmm. But then from Booster to Camp Meeting, we had those two after Webster Street, yeah. maybe 30 feet apart. Yeah. Um, then there was the three in the same day. Then there was the one in front of Peterson's. Yeah. Um, in front of Gio's. Was, yeah, one in front of Keyes, one in front of Tapley's, yeah. one down by Glen Street, and one by the Booster Station. Um, there was another one, because that pipe doesn't go straight, it goes up around Common and down. So there's nothing in between. On the on, cemetery. On Route 16, there's nothing yeah. in front of the Common. Yeah. yeah. So going up around, we had that big one that you probably could have lost the car in. Uh, oh yeah, so that one just like half the road washed down onto Main Street. <laughs> it just that was such a big break on that one. Yeah. So like I said, we're getting up probably over ten breaks now. So from Franklin all the way to Camp Meeting needs to be done. And when I looked at it, I think I broke it into three or four. So it was the one that's already set up. You already got stubs to go between Franklin and booster. So I would get that section done first and then start looking at probably go from booster to Rydell, the fire station. Mm -hmm. And then from the fire station you either go up to the common or you go all the way down to camp meeting. It's just a matter of... You'll have a crisscross there because that crosses <laughs> and then goes down south, uh, yeah. southeast Maine. Yeah, it goes up around and then when it comes down it's where Northwest Main comes down. It comes down and tees in, then goes down a little bit and tees to go down south, south. east, southwest. Southeast. That was stupid direction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those pipes are 110 years old now, aren't they? Around the common. Yeah, 19, yeah that, 19, well, the one going down yeah. south, whatever one that is. That's new. I like South that Southeast. Yeah, that's, I remember they did that. 12 inch cast, yeah. uh, ductile. Yeah. So they, that's, did that, they did that in the 80s. Yeah. I was on That was when Glen Street went in. Yeah. That hole, yeah. they put the loop in and put the new elbow yeah. in. So. I remember yeah, because we dug it up three times by Dudley's Pond because there was a leak. And we could a leak, the and leak. it was like the first pipe. It was the first stretch of pipe. <laughs> and we dug in front of the pond like four times because they kept hearing the water running underneath the road. <laughs> so that's where they thought <laughs> it was. Yeah, so that's all new. Yeah. New ducting <laughs> going around. But, you know. I'd like to get water up in my other house up there. Yeah. Just to extend that line up to the end of the V I look at the water's terrible up there. Yeah. But <coughs> I even thought about seeing if I could get an easement from well, I guess we should probably be talking about it. across the street. It's that time only. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at nine thirty. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.